What is red, gold, and shiny all over? I'll give you a hint. It is also the best superhero. You guessed it, it's Iron Man. <laughs> Iron Man is the best superhero movie. It is captivatingly hilarious, accurately portrays our generation, and displays what hard work can truly do. The point of movies is to entertain. Why else would movie makers be called entertainers? Iron Man can entertain almost any audience. Um, in Iron Man, it accurately portrays our generation. What better way to portray the period of time we're in right now that is so technology-based than with a genius that makes a suit to become a superhero? To get his start, Iron Man is trapped in Afghanistan after his Humvee is ambushed. He makes it out alive by creating the suit and then goes back to save other people who would have to endure a similar fate. He literally rises from the ashes. How do I know all of this? I've seen Iron Man more times than I would like to admit. Let me prove it to you. Iron Man is made even more entertaining with Tony Stark, the main character, Iron Man, with his use of humor. He combines dry humor and physical comedy to captivate the audience. Whether he is laughing in the face of his enemy or teaching himself how to fly, his humor cannot be matched. The visual effects in the movie are totally utilized. They take advantage of the technology that today has to offer, yet they still look believable. Also, Iron Man does not have some of the darker elements that other superhero movies have. Let's look at Batman. Batman struggles with good and evil and eventually has to watch his city ruin itself. He doesn't even know if he wants to be a superhero. Tony Stark, though, he confidently accepts his role as Iron Man, and he does it the best. Without the context of the storyline, it would lose a lot of its impact. We will always have Iron Man. We will always be able to look back and watch Iron Man and remember what life was like right now. It contains current events. Stark is the CEO of his company, Stark Industries. They sell weapons to the military. While previewing a new missile in Afghanistan, his Humvee is ambushed and he is taken prisoner. We have all seen too many people in a similar situation. The, um, the look of a once powerful man with his arms tied behind his back and guns aimed at his direction is all too familiar for those of us who have lived through this tumultuous time. Also, we are all aware of the problem in the Middle East. I have learned a lot about other cultures from watching movies, and future generations will be able to look back and watch this movie and know what it was like to live through this time. Also, Stark built his suit around the best technology, the same technology that is keeping him alive by keeping the shrapnel out of his heart. By utilizing this technology, it shows the pivotal role that technology plays in our society today. Just like Iron Man makes his own suit, he also makes his own destiny, propelling toward success through hard work. Iron Man's story shows how much hard work can truly affect a person's life. Tony Stark portrays the idea of the phoenix. The phoenix is a bird that never dies. It is simply burned up and reborn from its own ashes. When Tony Stark was saved by a stranger, he was born again. Somewhere in the dark cave that he was imprisoned, he rose. Um, he worked under the pressure of death to create his own suit in order to escape. Then, he improved the suit to be able to go back to Afghanistan and save the lives of people that were enduring the same fate that he was. This transformation from a self-centered playboy to a self-sacrificing humanitarian not only conveys the idea of the phoenix, but also shows a capacity for human growth. Growth is not possible without knowledge or wisdom. Both knowledge and wisdom can be gained by watching Iron Man. Stark is lovable, unpredictable, and hilarious. The culture is perfectly described, and it will remain steadfast as a premium. It will remain as a timeless classic, as a premium example of what culture is like today. Iron Man also shows the power of starting over and perseverance. If you don't believe me, go home and watch Iron Man. Watch an amazing action movie. Watch an inspiring story. Watch the best superhero movie.
Whether it's Zombieland or some sort of other recreated zombie film, most people see zombies as superior to humans. But in The Walking Dead, the humans overcome the struggle of the world being taken over. And they learn to survive with the little resources that are provided to them. The Walking Dead is a valuable show because it emphasizes teamwork, it consists of a dynamic cast, and the overall message is something that everyone can learn from. The show shows a great amount of teamwork, whether it's going into the city streets, infested with zombies to grab a bite to eat, or if it's simply just moving to a new location. Characters in The Walking Dead really help bring out the story and they really help you to get a better understanding of what, the, what their actual struggle is. Throughout the series, the characters make the most of their living environment and situations. With, uh, they, find time to have, they find time to have fun and enjoy themselves at times just like people would in the real world. Well, as you would see in the series, the characters find fun and bonding time in order to maintain their sanity, which is probably the reason that most of them are still alive in the series that is going on. Teamwork plays a big part in how the story ends up. Basically, the, the, whole, the entire last season was based off of them trying to find this little girl named Sophia. So they were traveling to a new location, and this little girl, Sophia, was getting chased by zombies, and she gets lost from the entire group. And so the whole season is pretty much based on them trying to find Sophia, the little girl, and they do a pretty good job working on it as a team. But there's one character in particular that chose not to work as a team, and he, his name's Daryl. He's kind of a hillbilly kind of guy. He carries around a cross, but I know a lot of you probably know him. He, he's kind of the guy who wants to kind of prove everyone wrong, and he wants to like be the hero. So one day, Daryl goes out looking for Sophia in the woods, and he ends up falling down a really steep hill. And one of his bows from his crossbow ends up sticking into his side. And he goes unconscious, only waking up to a zombie that is chowing down on his shoe. Um, he manages to pull out the, um, the bow and put it in his crossbow and shoot the zombie in his head. So he, 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 got away from <laughs> he got away from the zombie eating him alive. So he, ma he makes it back up the hill and he's walking back to the farm where the rest of his crew is at. And as he's walking, he's kind of limping as a zombie. So they're ready to shoot him and a, as a bullet kind of like grazes his head. And Daryl does survive, but that just shows an example of where teamwork did not work in that situation and how the story would probably would have ended up different if he would have had a partner with him or something. In order to have a successful show, the cast needs to work as a team where they will not achieve what they are trying to accomplish. Um, the fact that the, the main character's normal accent is British, um, it really shows that the director was really trying to put in the, the time and the effort to make a really good show because they had to teach him to speak proper English. And if this special time and effort was not used to um, pick out the rest of the cast, then the show probably wouldn't be as good as it is or the message probably wouldn't be as vivid. Mm. The show portrays how every situation can be made into a good one, no matter how horrific it is. The characters maintain their, com well, most of the characters maintain their composure and ability to stay sane throughout the, throughout the series, um, due to the fact that they make something out of nothing. They participate in activities like horseback riding, shooting, fishing, just like people would in the real world, just they're surrounded by zombies. So to wrap all this up, Walking Dead is a show that teaches good qualities, and how to overcome adverse situations. The Walking Dead is a valuable show because it emphasizes teamwork, it consists of a dynamic cast, the overall message is something that everyone can learn from, and they've made it this far, but how much longer will their sanity last them? Take a minute and think to yourself, would you be able to survive for 39 days if someone dropped you off on a deserted island with 15 other strangers and very few items to live off of? Now some of you may be thinking that you would die or that you wouldn't be able to survive. Well Survivor shows us differently. Survivor is a remarkable reality TV show on CBS and has been airing for 12 years. It's 25th season, aired for the first time two nights ago, so the show comes on about two times a year, 
and it's a great show because how many lessons that we can learn from it. Now there are three main lessons of Survivor, which is also the slogan of the show. Outwit, outplay, and outlast. We can learn through watching the contestants put their mind to the test and outwit the rest. We can learn through watching them outplay in competitions. And we can also learn through watching them endure everything and outlasting to the end. Now one of the things we first learn on Survivor is involved with using our minds. We can learn how to create friendships, or what Survivor contestants call alliances. Now, on every season, there's alliances that are stronger ones and weaker ones. And one of the biggest alliances in the show was one created by this girl named Pavardi. She competed on three seasons, and on her second season, she created the alliance called the Black Widow Brigade Alliance. And in this alliance, she stayed close to the people that in her alliance, but the other people that weren't, she backstabbed and lied to. Now, although she backstabbed other people, it got her all the way to the end with her alliance, and she won the show. Now, on the other hand, you have an alliance created by this girl named Sandra on a different season. And Sandra was different because she was nice to everyone. She treated everyone with kindness and respect, and she was aligned with everyone on the show. And this got her all the way to the end, and that's how she won her season. So now, even though there's different ways of making alliances and friendships, ultimately it's needed in doing group tasks and being able to strategize well. Survivor provides us with a different way of thinking and takes friendships and alliances to a whole other level. So some people play the game like socially, and then others play a physical game. Being able to outplay, performing through competitions. Performing is something that's needed when you want to win an award or if you want to be immunity. So on Survivor, there's two competitions each week. And the award challenge, they get something to bring home. And on the immunity challenge, then they survive tribal council. So one of the best players on Survivor was this guy named Ozzy. And he was physically strong. He won almost every competition. And this didn't just make them not be able to go to tribal council, but he became likable because he would go catch fish for them, and he would go get their coconuts. So that's how he made it far in the game. And this is also a great strategy to have. So not only do you need to be able to have a good social game and physical game, but something that's very important in Survivor is to be able to outlast, to endure everything. And Survivor makes us realize that we don't need that much to survive, that we can survive on the basic essentials of small amounts of food and water and some land to sleep on. So when contestants come to Survivor, they can only bring one personal item with them. And this has to be of sentimental value. It can't be like a knife, because then it would be too easy to hunt. So they have to do everything by themselves. If they want water, they have to go dig it. If they want food, then they have to go catch a fish or go get a coconut or some other way of food. And shelter, they have to get land materials and use them to sleep on. So even though we want materialistic things all the time, Survivor teaches us that we don't need them to survive, and we can just do like our ancestors did before us. So being able to endure is something we can use to overcome anything. Survivor shows us very many significant lessons, one that we can use to, to apply in real life. It shows us that we can um, overcome our struggles, and watching the show, you might be able to realize your own struggles Recognize them, and then overcome them. So next time your TV is on, and if Survivor is on, go ahead and watch it. You might learn lessons about wit, outplay, and outlast. They'll stay with you, and you won't regret it.